Tagapan, officially the city of Tagapan, Pangasinan, Ciudad Natagapan, is an independent component city in the province of Pangasinan in the Philippines. According to the census of May 1, 2010, Tagapan City has a population of 163,676 people with an income classification of second class. Located on the Linga and Gulf on the island of Luzon, Tagupan is a major commercial and financial center north of Manila. Also, the city is one of the centers of modern medical services, media and communication in northern Luzon. Tagupan is situated within the fertile Agna River Valley. The city is among the top producers of milkfish in the province. From 2001 to 2003, Tagupan's milk fish production totaled to 35,560.1 metric tons, mount, contributing 16.8% to the total provincial production. Of its total production in the past three years, 78.5% grew in fish pens, cages while the rest grew in brackish water fish pond. Etymology the city's name was derived from the local Pangasin sword Pandaragupan, meaning gathering place as the city has been a regional market center for centuries. History Wingdom of Pangasinan During the 15th century, Pangasinan had been the site of an ancient kingdom called the Wangdom of Pangasinan, known as Fengchiasalan in Chinese records. A succession of local kings starting from Wang Kamein set the kingdom up as a trade center exporting silver, horses and torical shells to the ports in Japan, Ryukyu and China which in turn, sold silks and samurai swords to the kingdom of Pangasinan. Spanish Occupation The area that is now known as Dagupan was described as marshland thickly covered with mangrove and nipa palm trees. The natives lived along the shoreline and riverbanks of Calmay, Pandal, and Bonuan. But there were also communities in Malyud, Lazip, Pogo, and Wakao. The natives called the area Bagnet in which it would later be incorporated into the encomienda of Lingan that was established in 1583. The foreign traders would come to the Linga and coast to trade gold that was brought down to the area by tribes from the Cordillera Mountains. Aside from traders, Filipinos also had experience with pirates from Japan and China. One of the Chinese corsairs was Lim Feng, in Fukinas, Lim A Hong, who would be known in Philippine history as Lim A Ong. Limaong sailed down the Ilocos coast with 62 ships and attacked Manila on November 30, 1574. The Spanish, however, under Mexico-born Juan de Salcedo repulsed Limaong's two attacks. The Chinese corsair repaired to Pangasinan to establish a colony at Bagnet, invading and dissolving the local kingdom of Pangasinan on December 2, 1574. But the Spanish conquistador Juan de Salcedo laid siege to his fortress for eight months by blocking the river outlets. Limaong purportedly broke through the siege by digging a channel from the Inga River through the Bacnetan marshes to Linga and Gulf. Thereafter, Pangasinan was incorporated to Spain. In 1661, a big fire hit Bacnetan during the Malong Revolt, led by Andres Malong of Bino and Tongan against the forced labor and mandatory sale of local goods imposed by the Spanish colonial government. The fire broke out after Milong sent 3,000 supporters, most of whom were Zambal tribesmen, to Ilocos and Cagayan to fight the Spaniards. The people of Bagnan, many of whom joined the Spanish forces in repelling the Zambal marauders, rebuilt the town and renamed it Nandaragupan meaning where once stood the commercial center, indicating its early importance as a trade, commercial and political center in the region. In 1720, 
Nandragupan was chartered as a town but its name was simplified to Digupan. Mulung was eventually beheaded in the city's Pantal Bridge in 1661 by Spanish authorities. Tagupan was also the birthplace of a Ladino named Caragay, who led another uprising in 1719 against the provincial governor, Alcalde Mayor, in Spanish, who had him flogged for what appeared to be a false accusation of smuggling. Governor Antonio del Valle had Caragay arrested in the village of Nandigalan, northeast of San Jacinto and Mangaldan and flogged. Vowing vengeance, Caragay organized a band of men who hounded the governor until they were able to kill him. Historians view Caragay as a model of the revolts of Polaris and Diego Silang. In 1762, Tegupan would be one of the first towns to join the Polaris revolt against Spain. In 1780 Pandal, originally named Pantelan, port, became a trading center and docking station for merchant ships. At about the same time, the Bangus industry thrived and mangrove swamps were converted into fish ponds, starting the land conversions that would later have an impact on flooding and earthquake damage in the province. The opening of the Pantelan dock eased the transportation of goods from Pangasin into other parts of the country, spurring the cultivation of idle lands in the eastern part and the development of fish ponds in the western part of the province. The new dock also eased communications between the colonial government its soldiers and the missionaries, who were tasked to colonize the natives in the Cordillera Mountains and the Cagayan Valley region and exploit its gold deposits. In July 1787 the Spaniards began to build a road to connect Pangasinan and the Cagayan Valley, the home of several head-hunting tribesmen who refused to submit to Spanish rule. Although it took several of years to complete, the road would play a vital role in the colonization of the Cagayan Valley and the Cordillera Mountains. The Polaris and Silang revolts, which occurred simultaneously with the British invasion of the Philippines demonstrated to the Spaniards the importance of ports in Pangasinan and Ilocos to the security of the entire island of Luzon. They thus became centers of Spanish governance and acculturation in the 19th century. When the port of Manila was open to foreign trade in 1830, tobacco from Pangasinan and Cagayan Valley were shipped to the colonial capital via Dinkapan and Lingaan. Foreign trading agents also began to make appearances in the two towns, starting a new era of prosperity, especially for the provincial gentry. The Filipino scholar Maximo Gala found the description of the American writer David Barros as appropriate. The Filipino had now become embarked upon a new current of intellectual experience, a course of enlightenment which has been so full of unexpected development. Throughout the islands, a class was rapidly growing up to which the new industries had brought wealth. Their means enabled them to build spacious and splendid homes of the fine hardwoods of the Philippines, and to surround themselves with such luxuries as the life of the islands permitted. This class was rapidly gaining education. This was also true of the Dagupan gentry. Trade enriched many families and allowed them to send their science to study overseas. These young men returned to the Philippines not only with technical knowledge in their chosen fields but also with the intellectual currents of the time, including constitutional republicanism which swept Spain in 1810. News from the colonial government in Manila also reached Tagupan at a faster pace with the completion of the manila Tagupan Railway in 1891. The railway would play a significant role not only in the economic development of Pangasinan but also in the success of the Philippine Revolution.